Let's see here. It's not quite there yet, but it feels surprisingly realistic at times. Spiral dive. Hi everyone, I'm Andre, and this is part two of the paragliding game series. Um, the first one worked a lot better than I expected. Um, a lot of you left loads and loads of comments, loads of suggestions, a lot of support for the project, and me and Ricardo really appreciate it. It really gave us a lot of motivation to carry on and continue to do this. So because the format for the first one worked quite well, I think I'll keep it for the rest of the series. So when we have a game update, I'll try to tie it in with a simple or complex paragliding principle. So today I thought I'd talk about how we can use a paraglider to go cross country. And this is to go from A to B, where the distance between A and B might be something like 10, 20 kilometers and all the way up to 565 kilometers, which is the current world record. So if you've been paragliding for any amount of time, this won't be new to you. So you can skip right this part and go to the game part if you're interested. But if you're new to paragliding or you're thinking of getting into paragliding, this might be interesting. So let's have a look. Okay, so here we are back to the uh, yellow paper. Okay, so going cross country, usually referred in paragliding as XC flying cross country so like I said the whole point is to go from some point A here to some point B and let me explain to you why this might be difficult in a paraglider a paraglider is as the name suggests a glider and that means it flies pretty much in the same way as a paper airplane so if it's flying through still air, uh, meaning there's no movement in the air whatsoever, there's no current, no turbulence, nothing, uh, these aircraft will always fly forward and down. Um, so eventually they will hit the ground because they have no means of propelling themselves and gaining altitude. So if we look at this path that we take, we can break it down in two ways and this is not to scale but it will have um, horizontal speed and a vertical speed um, typically on modern gliders that might be something like horizontal speed might be 36 kilometers per hour and the vertical speed might be 1 or in this case because it's negative minus 1 meters per second this might look a bit counterintuitive, but it's just the convention, the units that I use for each one. But they're both speeds. They're both uh, distance over time. So you can travel 36 kilometers in an hour or one meter in a second. So we can convert them. So to go from kilometers an hour to meters per second, you just divide by 3.6. So if we have 36 divided by 3.6, Oh, this is really lucky, 10 meters per second. Which means in one second, our glider has traveled 10 meters horizontally and one meter vertically. And what this means is that we end up taking that path. And this angle here ends up something like a 10 to one angle, which is, um, usually referred to as the glide ratio. How far can you go, how many units, with one unit of height? So back to our problem here of getting from A to B. Uh, we can quickly guess that if we are on a mountainside here and we launch and there's still air, we're gonna be traveling down here 
If this height here is say 500 meters, in the best case scenario, this distance here is going to be 5,000 meters because we're gliding with a 10 to 1 ratio, which means, you know, it's not bad. It's a pretty good um, form of transportation, but it has, it has its limitations. You know, you can only go so far and the higher you are, the further you can go. So you can think about this height that you have above the ground, kind of like your fuel or your potential energy. The more height you have, the further along you can glide. So this becomes interesting if you manage to find other sources of potential energy, or in this case, other fuel stations along the way. So like we said in the previous video, you might have a piece of the ground here that is a bit of different color, and the sun is shining here, and you might have another one here. You don't know it at the time, but you end up figuring it out. That means it creates thermals on your path. And you might choose your path in a way that has thermals. So, in this situation, what might happen is that you might fly here, and then the thermal is providing more lift than what you're sinking at. So it might be that you're sinking at one meter per second, but this might be a three meter per second thermal, which means you're going up at two meters per second. So not only are you not losing height, but you're gaining height as well. So when you get to here and you go off on glide because you can't fly in the clouds, then here is like having your tank full. And here is like having your tank half full. And here is like having your tank pretty much empty. So you continue on your way, you find another thermal, fill up your tank again, and you continue on your way. And not only you've reached B, but you're even with more height than what you needed to get there. So you can spiral down and land, or you can continue and find even more thermals and continue going even further. So this idea of gliding and then climbing and filling up your tank of potential energy and then gliding again, finding another one, and this cycle of climb and glide, climb and glide, is how paragliders, hang gliders and other gliders, um, birds do this. Uh, how you manage to go uh, a very long distance uh, exerting very little effort. Okay, so that's the basic idea of how we can go long distances cross-country with gliders, be it paragliders or any other type of gliders. So, just like last time, I thought, let's put it to the test with our game, see if we can go cross-country. Okay, <clears throat> so we now have two cameras, the top down and we've seen before but this is actually a 3D world, so that's quite cool. And we also have a target in the map where we want to get to. And we'll find some thermals to get there. Ooh, that was close. That's uh, that thermal was really small, so I'm off in search to try to find another one that is a bit easier to a bit easier to core, maybe a little bit larger. Well, there's something here. Oh, 
It's definitely larger. See where we come from over there. Let's try and uh, go along this ridge here. We are definitely getting closer to uh, to our target. Oh look, the little target there. I think we can probably make it from here. We can make it across this, uh, this little passage. Uh, have to be careful, we're on the lee side. But there's no lee side because there's no wind. <laughs> Maybe in a future video we'll have wind. Okay, looks like we're gonna arrive there a bit too high. But that's better than too low. Can uh, do some wing overs here to lose some height. I think in time as well, I could always use this to demonstrate uh, constant aspect approaches and different types of approaches. Um, be quite interesting. The approach is the uh, path you take when you want to when you want to land in a specific point, and there's lots of different um, ways to go about it. So this could be a way to to show that as well. This is what you never do unless you're a pro. <laughs> uh, looks like maybe we're not going to make it. We've gone too far. Uh, uh, almost, almost, yes, made it, uh, well, we haven't finished this bit yet, but yeah, we made it, we made it cross country, just thought I'd show you as well, what the map looks like, with the thermals on, from here we can see the whole map, I think, we took off somewhere from here. We started around here. Then we tried to catch this thermal, but it was a bit too narrow, a bit too hard. Then we got this one. And then we kind of skipped straight over this mountain pass here and onto the target. So this is the map we have so far. We might make a, might make a bigger one. So that's it, that's where we got to so far. We got it working in 2D and 3D and you can change between the two. Uh, we also have various thermals so we can go cross country uh, on a map. Uh, and I know a lot of you have been asking if this is released yet, if you can download it and play it. Um, it's not really ready for that yet. So please bear with us because these things do take a bit of time and we want everyone to have a good experience. So it's gonna take a little while, but stay tuned. Uh, but we really, really appreciate your comments and your positivity and your encouragement. Uh, the last video has been amazing for that. Um, so for me personally, I would really like to see it as a platform. So not a simulator and not a game, kind of a bit of both. Uh, a platform where you can build things on top of it. So if I want to build a series of 10 examples of how if you change this, this is what happens and this is how McCready works or how speed to fly works uh, or how to center a thermal. You can do this on this platform, but also if I want to set up a game with 10 people and try to race cross country, the game is kind of like the physics, the platform that holds it all together. Um, so that's just an idea of how I'd like to see it. But obviously all of these things take time and effort and knowledge. So uh, we'll have to see where we can get to that. So uh, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of this type of content. There's a lot of really cool projects coming along. I hope I'll be able to release uh, the latest video on the uncollapsible paraglider coming next week and if you enjoy this kind of projects please consider supporting this channel on patreon it really helps there's uh, 10 or 11 people on patreon already supporting me and i really really thank them for that and yeah i'll see you next time bye